One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treve from Treve Talks here for another episode of Treve Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treve from Treve Talks here, and we are back on the draft grind, ladies and gentlemen. We get closer and closer and closer. We are nine days away from day one of the 2019 NFL Draft. It's one of my favorite times of the year, and I am so very excited to see what the Jags do with the 7th overall selection. Are they going to try and give a target to Nick Foles? Are they going to try to solidify this offensive line even more? Who knows? We will not know until Roger Goodell is on that podium at pick number 7 with the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to do. But ladies and gentlemen, I have came up with 6 pitches for who the first round selection for the Jaguar should be. I have who I personally want it to be, who it should be, someone you might not think it would be, the obvious choice, who I would hate it to be, an underrated choice, and the person who it will be, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is my six pitches for the Jaguars for their first round pick in 2019. Who I want it to be, Quarterback, Dwayne Haskins, Ohio State. Now, I know the Dwayne Haskins hype train has more than left as far as who the Jaguars are going to be drafting at number 7. That really went out the window about two months ago when the rumors were coming around that the Jags were going to be signing Nick Foles. And everybody's like, well, if they're going to be signing Nick Foles to this big money contract, there's no way they'd go out and draft a quarterback in the first round. Now, I really still do not think they will be drafting a quarterback in the first round, but this is me personally who I would want. I would love to have Dwayne Haskins on the squad, but I completely understand not wasting a first-round pick on a backup quarterback, even though this quarterback has a lot of potential. And, you know, there's still a chance Dwayne Haskins probably will not be on the board for the seventh overall pick. But if you watch any of my draft videos that I have made uh, during the draft process, which dates back even as far as three months ago probably, you know, I was talking about Kyler Murray, Dwayne Haskins heavy. I was like, if the Jags don't draft one of these guys, they're going to ruin their franchise. And I don't necessarily think that anymore, um, but I do think that if we want to groom a quarterback for the long haul, Dwayne Haskins is that guy. I think he's the most pro-ready quarterback out of any quarterback in this draft class, and I think with how ready he is, and if he gets groomed even more to learn the system behind Nick Foles for a little bit, he will even be a better player, and Jacksonville is a good spot for him to be. Assuming down the line when he comes in, we have a little bit more targets and things like that. Hopefully in the second round, address the wide receiver position, tight end position, etc. But I am still a big believer in Dwayne Haskins, and I still really, really want Dwayne Haskins. I know it's a long shot now, but this is who I personally want in the first round, and it is quarterback Dwayne Haskins. Who it should be, TJ Hawkinson, tight end, Iowa. The Jaguars desperately need help at the tight end position. We have talked about this time and time again. The tight end room is probably the worst as far as depth goes and star potential in the Jaguars uh, locker room right now. They got Jeff Swain, Ben Koyak, James O'Shaughnessy. None of those guys are reliable number one tight ends. And none of them are going to be a reliable security blanket for Nick Foles. Nick Foles played with Zach Ertz for the better part of three to four years. And he is one of the best tight ends in the game. And he bailed Nick Foles out a lot. And he was able to... Uh, rely on Zach Ertz during the clutch times and the Jags again don't have that tight end and that's why addressing the tight end position in the first round I think is way more important than addressing an offensive tackle in the first round. I think the Jags have done a good job with addressing depth on the offensive line through free agency and you know we got Will Richardson who I think could fill in and do a good job and then we got other guys behind him that if he doesn't work out maybe they could step in and there's still a possibility of getting an offensive lineman in the second round but as far as making this offense a little bit more explosive and to put up more points on the board so this defense can just hold people and make sure they don't score points they need to get a reliable solid tight end and TJ Hawkinson is one of the best tight ends to come out of the NFL draft in a long long time same thing with his partner Noah Faint Both of them are very, very talented tight ends, but TJ Hawkinson should be 
the first round selection, whether that be at seven or if the Jaguars do decide to trade back and get him later on. But I'm not one of those guys that's opposed to just drafting him at the seventh position. Tight end has became one of the most important positions in the NFL from a blocking standpoint to a security blanket standpoint. Tight end is a very, very important position in the NFL. And I don't understand the people that say, we can't do this at seven. It's not worth the seventh overall pick. Well, the chances of him being there if we trade back get slimmer and slimmer. But you know for a fact, he's going to be there at pick number 7. So I don't know why we would waste any time. I think we should get on it, draft TJ Hawkinson, because that's the player we need and the player we should be drafting in the first round, in my opinion. Someone you might not think the Jags would draft, Andre Dillard, offensive tackle, Washington State. Slowly but surely, Mr. Andre Dillard's draft stock has been rising, 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 and rising. And he is one of the most athletic offensive tackles in this draft and is one of the best offensive tackles in this draft as well. Now, the Jags are going to be drafting the offensive tackle position. They will have some options there. Jonah Williams is more than likely looking to be there because not, I think the first six picks are going to be very defensive heavy. And then you got Jawan Taylor from Florida, and of course you got Andre Dillard. And the Jags are no the Jags are no strangers to throwing a bit of curveballs uh, in the NFL draft. And drafting Andre Dillard would be a curveball, but not necessarily a bad one. Like I said, I personally think he's probably the most athletic offensive lineman in this year's draft, and probably the second best offensive lineman overall behind Jonah Williams. Who I think Jonah Williams is going to be. A hit no matter what. You know, he's a great offensive lineman. Andre Dillard, he's a really good pass blocker. He played in a spread offense in Washington State and was more often than not pass blocking for Gardner Minshew. But uh, he's still a bad, dirty boy in the trenches. A bad, dirty boy, I said. A bad, dirty boy in the trenches. And again, he's one of the more underrated prospects in this year's draft. And he's already gone to Jacksonville for a official visit before the draft to see the facility, talk to the coaches, and I think Doug Marone would like this guy, a gritty, gritty, athletic offensive tackle, and again, you might be surprised to hear his name called, and don't say I didn't warn you, because this one is not going to be a shocker if you watch this video. The obvious pick, Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle, Florida. This one's obvious. All the mock drafts that official mock drafters do have us getting Jawan Taylor. Just for some reason, I just don't buy it. Like, it's almost too obvious. It's almost too obvious that the Jags go out and draft Jawan Taylor. But in most years, whoever the they mock to the Jags, except for last year with Taven Bryan, because 29 was a little 29 was a little different. But any anywhere in the top 10, top 5 that the Jags have picked. They have usually, mock drafters have usually got the pick right, whether that be Jalen Ramsey, whether that be Leonard Fournette, Dante Fowler, you know, those guys were people that the mock drafters had the Jags drafting all the way through the whole entire process, and Jawan Taylor is that guy, you know, they have him the whole entire process, process. but when you think about it and the defensive heavy draft that is presented this year in 2019, the chances of Jonah Williams being on the board is getting greater and greater every single day. And with that being said, he's obviously better than Jawan Taylor and I think should be the selection, but the obvious selection would be Jawan Taylor again because everybody's saying that's where the Jags are going to go is Florida offensive tackle Jawan Taylor. Now my boy UCF posted today that can we just strap everybody that says we shouldn't draft Jawan Taylor because he's from Florida and everybody we draft from Florida is a bus. Can we strap him to a rocket? You know, but are they wrong, though? <laughs> you know, are they wrong, though? The Jags, if they draft anybody from Florida or a Florida school in general, except for Jalen Ramsey, which is a good one, uh, it, they, they don't seem to pan out. They really don't. And uh, Jawan Taylor might be that next guy to not pan out and... Uh, yeah, but he is definitely the obvious selection, uh, mostly because, you know, the mockers are drafting him there. But uh, it's almost a little bit too obvious for my taste, and I almost just don't think it's going to happen. Who I would hate? Jawan Taylor. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it because we just got done talking about him. But I would hate to draft Jawan Taylor because I think there's going to be better 
players on the board and better offensive linemen on the board. Like, he's not going to be the best player available at number seven. Jonah Williams and Andre Dillard are both offensive tackles I would take over Jawan Taylor. TJ Hawkinson, uh, DK Metcalf, uh... I don't, I don't know about DK Metcalf. We'll, we'll, we'll put that one on hold for a minute. But, you know, I would take Andre Dillard. I would take Jonah Williams. I'd take Ed Oliver. I'd even take Montez Sweat over Jawan Taylor because I don't think he's that good. I don't think number seven overall, Jawan Taylor, is that good. I think Jonah Williams is better, and I think Andre Dillard is better as well. I think he's the third best offensive tackle in this draft, and when we have an opportunity to snatch up the first or the second best, why wouldn't we do that? Why would we select Jawan Taylor, who again, in my opinion, is the third best offensive tackle in this year's draft? It just would not make sense to me. An underrated one, and one that might happen, Ed Oliver, defensive tackle. Ed Oliver is going to be on the board, presumably at 7. You know, you got Kyler Murray, who's, you know, day in and day out is switching on and off on the number one overall pick. Um, You know, you got Nick Bosa, Grady Williams, you know, all these defensive guys that are going to be taken. And Ed Oliver could be one of those guys as well. But if Ed Oliver finds himself at number seven, and you know how this front office works when they see somebody that they can add on the defensive side of the ball, they will take the opportunity. And I would not be surprised and I would not be upset if the Jags drafted Ed Oliver. I think Ed Oliver is probably the best interior defensive tackle in this year's draft. And I think that he would help out in the rotation a lot and even could find himself starting. He could come in for Marcel Darius or Avery Jones and perform really, really well. And him and Taven Bryan could be a kind of a combination last year's first round pick and this year's first round pick. And I think that would be a pretty, pretty decent uh, draft. Uh, draftee in the first round Ed Oliver would be. I am not going to be against drafting Ed Oliver in the first round like a lot of people are. A lot of people are like, why would we draft defense? Think about it. Who's subbing in? Who's subbing in for Avery Jones and Marcel Darius? You know, you just got really Taven Bryan that's going to be doing that. And that's the same thing with the defensive end position that the Jags are going to have to probably address in the second or third round as well. You know, they need a little bit more depth on that side of the ball. Yes, they have playmakers that play those positions that start, but they don't have good depth at those positions, at least in my opinion and in a lot of people's opinion. My boy Chris actually kind of turned me on to this idea because, you know, I was wanting you. I was like, we have so much more holes to fill. Why would we draft something that we're already at a strong suit? And it's mostly because these defensive linemen, they aren't they are on the field necessarily every single snap. You know, we need some substitutions. We need some subs. And Ed Oliver, I think, would be a really great substitution in there. And again, he has an opportunity to start. He has a lot of talent. He has a high ceiling and a low floor as well. A lot of potential. So an underrated draftee would be Ed Oliver in the first round for the Jags. And finally, who it will be, Jonah Williams, offensive tackle. It will be Jonah Williams. That's who it will be. It will be Jonah Williams, in my opinion, because Jawan Taylor, man, it's just too obvious. It's just too obvious that the Jags would do that. And Jonah Williams is more and more every single day looking like he is going to be on the board for the Jags at 7, and he is the best offensive tackle in this year's draft. So there's no reason why the Jags should not capitalize on that opportunity if that's what they're going to do. If they want to get a new offensive tackle in the building, they need to draft Jonah Williams because he is the best offensive tackle in this year's draft. And that is a fact. Uh, And like I keep saying, this this draft is so defensive heavy and teams above us. Above us need defensive help or quarterback help, you know, Arizona and the Giants. So Jonah Williams should not be affected, you know. He should still be there at the 7th overall pick. And if we draft Jawan Taylor over him, I will be upset. If we draft Andre Dillard over him, eh, I'll be okay. Because I truly believe those two are the best offensive tackles in this year's draft. And I think with 100%... Right now, if I had to say who it's going to be at number 7, I'm going to say it's going to be Jonah Williams because he's the best offensive tackle in this year's draft and he's going to be right there for the picking at number 7 for the Jaguars. 
And that was six pitches for the first round pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. You can follow me on Twitter. Also at Troop Talks. You can follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.